seated. Shavua Tov. Wish one another a wonderful week. We are kicking off in high style. Shavua Tov. Please take your seats at this time. Shavua Tov everyone. Good evening. Welcome. We are we are so happy to celebrate with you tonight this a night to remember the special Saturday night celebration as part of our homecoming weekend, WRT at 65. And how nice it has been to share the Bima this weekend with so many friends, friends with whom we have the pleasure of working each and every day, and also friends from WRT years past who are continuing to lead our people in our movement. So those of you who were, shh, 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 please, thank you. Those of you who were in our sanctuary last night or at the church this morning where we had a really rousing Shabbat worship might have noticed a tall banner last night off to the side of the room or this morning at the very front of the church inscribed with the following words, Lidor Vador, from generation to generation. And tonight is a night for connecting the generations of our extended WRT family. The banner was created to celebrate this moment in the life of WRT and also to obscure the giant gold cross at the church. <laughs> so we began last night's worship with a singing of Lidor Vador, a setting by the Josh Nelson Project tonight we're going to offer the same words, but a new melody, melody by Craig Taubman. As we celebrate this moment in the life of our temple, we connect one generation to the next. Lador Vador. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
this time we would like to ask for some of our clergy alumni to come back up and sing with us one more song celebrating this moment in the life of WRT. This is a prayer for you. This is a prayer for you, our congregation. The only thing we ask okay. is for your quiet. Thank you. Thank you.
my sister. <laughs> this time, I'd like to invite forward the president of Westchester Reform Temple, the only living president of WRT who's not receiving a special tribute tonight, <laughs> but who worked tirelessly to make sure that this special weekend could come together. Please welcome Marcy Harris. Yeah, please. So that's a hard act to follow, um, but welcome. Welcome to this amazing gala celebrating 65 years of Westchester Reform Temple. It's inspiring to be here with all of you and with our beloved clergy, past and present, to welcome you home. It's humbling to reflect on the contributions of our past presidents who we pay tribute to tonight. You'll hear more about our honorees in a little while. When we show the past president's tribute video, you'll be saying Dianu again. Had our past presidents done half of what they did for Westchester Reform Temple, it would have been enough. But our honorees are a group of doers for whom half is never enough, never even an option. For all benefic beneficiaries of their talents and vision, tonight we gather in joy and love to thank them. So thank you to Bill Miller and Bill Blumstein, and Margie Miller, and Amy Lemley, and Ellen Sonnes, and Le two more, Lisa Messenger, and Helene Gray. Thank you all for what you've done and for what you continue to do for all of us. When my children were in the early childhood center, they'd come home singing a song that went like this, and I'm not singing like that, but it was Baruch Atah Adonai, Thank You God. And then they'd sing about everything they were thankful for. So as I said, I'm not singing tonight, but I am going to offer some thanks um, on behalf of all of us. Thank you to our gala co-chairs, Leah Dembitzer and Laura Chavis. to our rabbis and cantors who helped us separate the ordinary from the holy, not only during the beautiful Havdalah service, but throughout our lives. Thank you to Rabbi Blake for sharing your vision of homecoming weekend with us and for sharing your vision of leadership throughout the years. to Cantor Kleinman for thoughtfully coordinating the entire weekend's activities. Thank you to Danny Mendelson for creating the wonderful past president tribute video and last night's history video. Thank you to Kate Levy for creating our beautiful homecoming weekend invitations and logo. Thank you to Ellie Kornreich, our executive director, Tim Wagner, our facilities director, Hilary Fontana, our communications manager, and our and thank you to our custodians, Johnny Vasquez, Luis Vera, Billy Bowen, and Nick Marii. This night and this homecoming weekend would not have been possible without all of your extraordinary contributions and the contributions of many others. Thank you all. And finally, on this night of celebration, we celebrate each of you and thank you for your contributions, all the gifts from your heart and all of your financial contributions. During this time of counting in our calendar, know that we count you among our many blessings. Your love and support of WRT sustain us. Enjoy the evening. So once again, welcome. I want to sound the theme for this evening's tribute, and that theme is collaboration. I know that a lot of love has been showered 
on clergy past and present this week, but I want you to know that none of what we do could be done with what, without what our temple lay leadership does with us and for us, and we are immensely grateful. So many great works have been accomplished through collaboration. Where would Moses have been without his Aaron? Where would Lennon have been without McCartney? Where would Sherlock Holmes have been without Watson or Watson without Crick? Where would Quentin Tarantino be without Uma Thurman? Ben without Jerry? Or Dembitzer without Chavis? Great collaborations allow people with a shared vision to push each other, to round out each other, to temper each other's edges, and sometimes to cover up each other's flaws, and to see around each other's blind spots. WRT has a celebrated history of lay clergy collaboration. Now tonight, we're going to spend the bulk of our time honoring our past presidents but I would like to celebrate a few collaborations that without fancy video presentations or many words spilled about them, nevertheless have been instrumental in making this whole weekend what it has become. So first of all, I want to thank our spouses. Many of our clergy spouses are here tonight. My own wife, Kelly, is sending her mazel tov to Westchester Reform Temple on this auspicious occasion from the Imperial Theater where she is currently in the cast of Carousel. I want to thank the heroes of our staff whose work for this weekend has been monumental and might otherwise go unsung, especially that of Tim, our facilities director, and Ellie Kornreich, our executive director. You know that all of my clergy colleagues are extraordinary, but Marcy was not exaggerating when she mentioned that every detail of this weekend was lovingly tended to by our own cantor, Amanda Kleiman. I'd love for Amanda to stand so that we can acknowledge her. Amanda, thank you so, so much. And finally, I want to single out the special collaboration that I enjoy and that I am building with our temple president, Marcy Harris. Marcy, it takes a special temple president who within five minutes of taking on this huge role for this demanding congregation, hears the senior rabbi say, so I have this idea for next April. And the idea is just overwhelmingly ambitious. It's not just a celebratory milestone service and a panel discussion featuring all of the top brass of the reform movement and a Saturday morning of prayer and study and a luncheon in tribute to our temple leadership and a gala on Saturday night and a day of engagement. It's all of these and so much more. And instead of Marcy saying, whoa, Blake, why don't you just tone it down a little bit? Marcy said, let's make this possible. And so, Marcy, to you, incredibly grateful. At this time, we will invite you to enjoy your salad course. Our video tribute to our past presidents will begin shortly. past presidents to honor them individually, and I'd like to invite Bill Miller to please come forward. <laughs> Bill, as you shared a moment ago, you were president at a very dramatic moment in the life of this great congregation. Rabbi Jack Stern 
the rabbi's rabbi's rabbi was retiring and someone was in charge of making sure that that would not only be a smooth transition but one that brought us from strength to strength. I have to say, I, I remember a 36-year-old rabbi named Rick Jacobs <laughs> was pretty nervous about the whole proposition of coming and following one of the greatest rabbinic legends. But what was clear then and is even more clear now is that there's something extraordinary about this congregation. And it isn't only the rabbinic and the cantorial and the educational leadership. It's about those amazing lay leaders and their partnership. This coming Thursday night, Rabbi Aaron Pankin and Daryl Messinger and I will have an opportunity to lead a session for 85 incoming temple presidents on the subject of sacred partnership. And the answer that I could give simply is Westchester Reform Temple. And to talk about the history of the partnerships of rabbis and presidents, of professionals and lay leaders. And I remember when I was the rabbinic intern, and I would sit in on the board meetings and I'd hear people like Bill Miller offer thoughts and suggestions in the most respectful and loving way. I remember Al Ronald and Joe Bernstein and Rosemary Burden and the partnership that they had with Rabbi Jack Stern. And one of the things that made this place so unbelievably attractive to a young rabbi was that I would get a chance to work with presidents who wouldn't simply be helpmates, but they would make everything not just better, but deeper and wiser. Bill Miller, you are an individual with an extraordinary gift of thoughtfulness and deliberation and there's a steadiness. And I can remember that first year, it was a lot of tumult. And when we would sit together each week and just go through things, there wasn't just a calming, but you were able to, in a gently and loving way, offer a young rabbi a whole lot of wisdom and support and love. You did that for the whole congregation. You are not only one of our past presidents that we love and honor tonight, but you've been a leader in every part of our community. The Scarsdale Bowl is something you have earned. And you have made Jewish commitment core to who you are. And you leave a lasting impact on each of us and on this great institution. And I hope you feel a sense of pride. I've actually been here long enough to have officiated at your bar mitzvah. <laughs> Because Bill became an adult bar mitzvah. You were and remain a model of what Jewish leadership is all about. So we ask God's blessing upon you. Adonai oz liamoyitain. Adonai yivarechet amova shalom. May God give you strength and even an extra measure of that goodness and integrity that you have shared with all of us. And may God bless you for many, many years to come. Amen. Thank you very Bill Blumstein, would you please come forward? <laughs> so Bill Blumstein, this congregation is part of every moment in your life. And you have led from the time you were a teenager, the time you served in every leadership capacity. And I was privileged during my years here to lead with you and to partner with you. And what a great partner you were through the most innovative and creative ideas of how do we reimagine Jewish life? How do we change the footprint of our, of our everything? And you were the kind of president who didn't say, okay, that's good. You held us all accountable, and you set timetables, and you drove us in the most wonderful way, and you had the gift also of worrying 
about the quality of <laughs> our families. <laughs> and when you would say, Rick, okay, go home. You have Susie, you have the kids. You, you didn't listen. I didn't listen. <laughs> but I so appreciated that you said that. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I, I did and I do. And Bill Blumstein, the crown that we so admire in our ark is a crown given to this congregation in honor of you. And the crown of a good name is a blessing that all of us aspire to. You have earned it. You've not only been a great leader of Westchester Reform Temple, you have been a leader of our reform movement. You have been a vice chair of our union. You have served as the head of our Commission on Lifelong Learning. You've been on our North American Board Oversight Committee. And everything you do, Bill Blumstein, you do with all of your heart and soul. We are so grateful for each and every one of those gifts. And I just would ask, as we think about the pure care vote, which says that there are three crowns. There's the, the crown that we might wear, whether we are a priesthood, whether the priesthood or the royalty or any kind of leadership, but the text tells us the crown of a good name is the most precious of all. Bill Blumpton, you have the crown of a good name, and we are so unbelievably appreciative and moved and helped and transformed into the Jewish community we are aspiring to be because of you, because of your devotion, your dedication, and your commitment and love. God bless you. Is Margie Miller in the house? <laughs> Margie Miller is a towering giant. And Margie Miller, Just to say it simply, we love you. Margie came to her leadership. She was an early childhood educator. She was and is our social worker in chief. And everything during Margie's presidency, and there were all kinds of tumults. I don't know if you remember the tumults and the different egos and all the things that would go on. And Margie Miller had this ability to just kind of put her arms around everybody, just kind of pull us closer together and to make us appreciate all of our gifts and to make those gifts add up to even more. You had the ability to take us into some of the hardest places of change, whether it was worship change and the way we redefined our sense of community. But you always did it with this unbelievable grace. And with you, Margie, everything is possible. Nothing is too difficult. And it has just been an extraordinary gift, not only to serve with you, but to watch you go on to the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. And after working with all of us, you went to work at the college as the chair of the Board of Overseers and on the Board of Governors to help raise up even more, more great Jewish leaders that they might have a chance to be touched by your gifts. And so we can't thank you enough for all that you continue to be and to think of the generations of your family here tonight, here in this temple. But think of all the people who quietly got that call from Margie Miller that were bent out of shape about something and just at the end of that call felt so lucky to be part of this sacred community. Very few rabbis have that gift. You have that gift and you have shared it abundantly with all of us. So from the bottom of our hearts, we say to you, Margie Miller, you continue to be a light and let that light shine forth and illuminate not just this great congregation that you love, not just this great movement that you have been so a part of, but let your light shine throughout the world. God bless Margie Miller. For those of you I have not yet had the opportunity to meet because you joined this congregation sometime after 2003. 
My name is Ken Chasen, and I had the... I enjoyed the great gift of spending five of the greatest years of my life as a part of this congregation. Uh, learning how to be a rabbi from a master, from many masters. Tonight we're celebrating all the masters. They don't all have the word rabbi before their name. But uh, the people who we celebrate tonight have all been a part of my journey. And the gifts that I have been seeking to bring forward into other corners of the Jewish world to make sure that the goodness of Westchester Reform Temple, the seeds that have been planted in me and so many others who have come through this blessed community um, are spread out into all of the world. Um, I am touched beyond belief that on this night, Rabbi Jonathan Blake, my friend, partner, classmate, a couple of years separated at Hebrew Union College, um, that he invited me to participate in this ritual and to allow me the honor of standing tonight with our president, Amy Lemley. Amy. Amy was the second president of my time here. When I came, Margie Miller was president of the temple. And at the time that I was preparing to leave, Amy was president. We spent a couple of years together during your presidency, but before that we had the opportunity to partner together in the work of evolving this community into uh, its answer to a remarkable challenge. When I arrived at Westchester Reform Temple in 1998, Rabbi Jacobs, what was it? I think we did about 57, maybe 58 bar mitzvahs, 59, 60, something like that at the beginning. When I left, the last year, there were 110. That was when that shift took place, all those massive numbers of young families converging upon Scarsdale and finding their way to this sacred community. And so we had a B'nai Mitzvah task force chaired ably by Amy Lemley that I had the opportunity to partner in, uh, in working and in guiding. And it was really the first deep opportunity I had to work in direct partnership lay professional partnership uh, in this sort of invention, reinvention work. It was the first time that I had the chance to see your vision, your courage, your deep, deep love of this community that comes out of you in every imaginable way, and your Solomonic wisdom for seeing all different sides of a complex question and exploring all of the possibilities. These were all staples of your presidency here at the temple. But I had the opportunity also to watch from the front row as you partnered with Rabbi Jacobs in the imagination of what this campus could be and in the mission the determination to make the dream of Lech Lecha into a reality, and then to leave in every corner of this campus your imprint, your artistic beauty touch left everywhere. What I want to say to you tonight, because of this incredible gift, the combination of your relentless attention to detail, relentless attention to detail, and your eye for beauty, put it all together. I want you to look around this temple. I want you to look around this community because this, all of these people and the magnificent home that you have worked to wrap around them, all of this is you. And we are forever, forever grateful. <laughs> to you, we say, Brucha at bevoech, Brucha at betzetech. In all of your comings and your goings, may you experience even a touch of the blessing with which you have touched all of us. Amen. <laughs> so Rabbi Blake uh, honored me and then he honored me twice. It is my great uh, delight to invite Ellen Sunnis to come forward for blessing. Honor. 
Ellen, your story of, of your Jewish identity is rooted in the experience of light emerging from darkness, of light coming to banish darkness. You, within your family story, experience both the purposefulness that comes from loss and the purposefulness that comes from survival. And you brought those into your Jewish life, starting as a young girl and all the way through your leadership and beyond your leadership of this congregation. Many people have experienced that type of darkness in their lives, in their family story, and have remained embedded in darkness, have never been able to transcend it or find their way forth from it. But you, Ellen, you are light and are in all ways that we experience you light never an echo of that darkness. When, uh, when I was in my last couple of years here at the temple, you were serving on the executive committee, and I remember Rabbi Jacobs was away, and I was invited to help uh, lead the executive committee conversation that night. And it's one of those days where you're dealing with the kinds of uh, unsavory challenges, and you know, there's a lot that's great about being the president of the temple. <laughs> there's a lot that's not so great about being the president of the temple. And we were dealing with a really sticky issue that night, and I just remember the way in which you carried yourself with your characteristic grace and goodness, integrity, uh, your humanity and elegance. This is the way you led this congregation all the way through with your grace and goodness. And your special gifts found the right moment here at this congregation because during your presidency, we experienced the pain of deep loss. You held us through our loss of Cantor Stephen Merkel and so many other powerful losses, and also guided us through the difficulty of transition here within our community as well. Done with your grace and goodness, the only way you know how. To you, we say, Bo'orech nir'eh or. In your light, we see light. We are grateful to you for showering us with brightness. Amen. Wow. So, uh, Ellen Sonnes and Amy Lemley are really hard acts to follow. No less than it is hard for a rabbi to follow Ken Chasen and then Rick Jacobs. These are, we're talking about some big shoes to fill. And in the case of Ellen and Amy, of course, those big shoes are also fabulous. <laughs> but. The shoes were, in fact, filled. And when Lisa Messenger became our temple president, she completed what I consider to be the holy trinity of Jewish leadership by adding the all-important component of blonde to <laughs> brunette and redhead. So Lisa, will you come forward? They are fa fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. So Lisa, you are a driving force, a driving force for leadership, not just within our congregation, but within our movement. You will do anything it takes to advance the deepest, most cherished values of Westchester Reformed Temple. You bring a deep understanding of our core. You keep alive the special memories of Rabbi Jack and Priscilla Stern, of Cantor Joe Boardman, of Cantor Stephen Merkel, and yet you have never been afraid of change. You are the most connected, a little bit, you are the most connected leader I have ever met, and I mean that in every sense of the word, including the mafios. <laughs> Lisa Messenger is even willing to sleep with the president of the seminary of the reform movement. <laughs> it's a lay professional collaboration in order to advance a vision for Westchester Reform Temple. Lisa, in our... You wasted no time completing that amazing transition of which you spoke in the video of which you are deservedly proud. 
and through which you gave honor to our congregation by indeed expressing our most cherished values of integrity, of listening, of process. But you wasted no time after the, com after the transition was complete in getting down to business in my office. So Lisa would come to our weekly president, rabbi, staff meetings with a list of about 28, 29 bullet points. This was a 90 minute meeting. And she would just start rattling around. I said, why don't we just tackle three this week? <laughs> but I think that we accomplished so much in part because of that relentless drive, that desire never to rest on our loyal, laurels. More than anyone I've ever met, you exemplify what we believe deeply here at WRT, which is that we are not a congregation that will ever say, Dayenu, it's good enough the way it is. The great Jewish theologian Stephen Schwartzchild once wrote a beautiful essay on the Messiah. And he explained that the Messiah, the redemptive power within Judaism, is best understood as the difference between the way things are and the way they ought to be. Now you can call that Mashiach, you can call it God. You carry that power in you, and then you channel that power out into our congregation and out into our movement and out into our world. And that's why it is so special for me to stand with, here, with you here, as I have in other settings many times before, to share with you my desire that that light of leadership will never be extinguished, but will, in fact, grow brighter and brighter. We know that the last thing you're planning to do is take it easy. <laughs> so Lisa, allow me to share with you these words of blessing from our Bible. May God cause all the works of our hands to prosper. And may all of your labors, Lisa Messenger, long endure. Together we say amen. I, uh, I do always get a little bit verklempt when asked to speak about my friend and presidential partner for four years, Helene Gray. She does also tend to bring out the Yiddish in me. Like no one since Cantor Stephen Merkel, Alava Sholem. In you, Helene, we find a person where Jewish values are lived each and every day. Jewish education matters. Never again, this is not a slogan. This is the very core of your being, and you have transmitted that to your children, to your family, and to your WRT family and beyond. You're a person who knows not only how to talk the talk, and I would add, talk the talk in Yiddish, in Hebrew, and even in a smattering of Aramaic. Yes, you can take the girl out of Flatbush, Yeshiva of Flatbush, but can't take the Yeshiva out of the girl. <laughs> Raising a Jewish family might be for you the highest expression of your neshama, your soul. I've actually said before that the only sacred cow in Helene Gray's home is the delicious brisket on your Shabbos table every Friday night. Helene, your presidency is barely passed. So perhaps it may feel a bit premature for us to be standing here together yet again to evaluate the meaning of your term. But as they say, objects in mirror are in fact closer than they appear. When I look back on these four years, I think of how much was accomplished to prepare Westchester Reformed Temple for the unique demands of Jewish life in the 21st century. Taking our organization, keeping its core of lay professional collaboration, but allowing us to run like a well-oiled machine. <laughs> Exemplifying both tzedek, fairness, and chesed, compassion, in the way in which we think about what it means to be part of this covenantal community. Transforming our educational program from a religious school into a Jewish learning lab where the delight in learning, where experimentation, where kinesthetic learning, all of these are cherished. I couldn't think of a better legacy for our congregation than the one that you have only recently bequeathed to us. And above all, Helene, I think you showed us that you don't have to be totally Meshuggah to serve as president of WRT. It just takes a little bit of Meshuggah and a whole lot of love combined with the highest aspirations that are deeply rooted in the soil of this place. That's what you've given us. So I want to leave you with a little blessing 
that I had to practice reading several times because it's in Yiddish. Zol zu der Leben zu fern deine Kinder und Kindskinder zu der Chuppe. May you live to lead your children and your children's children and the children of WRT to the wedding canopy and beyond. Amen. Please enjoy dinner.